Welcome to the Dance Centre podcast. I am your host, Claire French, and I'm joining you from the traditional unceded territories of the Musqueam, Squamish and Tsleil-Waututh peoples, also known as Vancouver, Canada. I'll be talking to dancers, choreographers and other members of the dance world here on the West Coast to find out more about their creative work and practices and to discuss what it means to us to be dance professionals today. Thanks for joining us. Anya Allegra Salkstad is a dancer and choreographer based in Vancouver, BC, on the unceded territories of the Squamish, Tsleil-Waututh and Musqueam First Nations. Anya trained at Arts Umbrella and has a BFA in dance from Simon Fraser University. As a dancer, Anya has toured with Action at a Distance, Vanessa Goodman. Anya is the artistic director of Furious Grace Dance Theatre, originally Dancers Dancing. Furious Grace, Anya Zalkstad, create live collaborative performance works in theatres and outdoors. Anya builds vigorous and highly physical ensemble choreography to express stories that encompass strength, celebration and yearning. Anya has created works for Ballet Edmonton, Arts Umbrella, Le Monde Dance, Simon Fraser University and Coastal City Ballet. Anya's work has been presented throughout BC, in Toronto and in Montreal. Anya Zaugstad is grateful to be the recipient of the Iris Garland Emerging Choreographer Award for 2023 to 2024. I'm joined today by Anya Zaugstad, who is a wonderfully gifted and prolific emerging choreographer. And we will dive right in with Anya to talk about the many facets of her emerging career and get to know a little bit more about her and see where we go from there. Anya, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I'm really excited to be here. Excellent. So you have a history of training in Vancouver and also elsewhere. So I wonder if you could kind of help us contextualize your life right now by going back to your training and some of your experiences from there. What would you like the listeners to know? What would you like to share? Absolutely. Cool. I, well, I grew up on Bowen Island, so small town, but near Vancouver. And I first started dancing at Arts Umbrella. I did many years at Arts Umbrella all through the pre-professional training program. And then after Arts Umbrella, I went to Simon Fraser University and got my degree in dance there. And during the summers of SFU, I would go to the San Francisco Conservatory of Dance, San Francisco. So I did a lot of training there for like four or five summers. And then I did a little bit of time after Simon Fraser University. um, I did a little bit of time at the performance research program with Leslie Telford. And then from there, I kind of spread my wings and (laughs) tried to fly. (laughs) But yeah, all of those those, uh, schools were very influential to me. And yeah. So in the summers, were they summer schools or were they self-directed um, sessions or how did that, how did you find out about those? Was it through your, mm-hmm. through Arts Umbrella or through? It was, yeah. I found out through it, through Arts Umbrella because they did not, they would do an audition at Arts Umbrella. Ah. And then I think the first summer I went was when I was still at Arts Umbrella. And then I just continued to go because I loved it so much. And it wasn't self-directed. It was like a summer intensive mm-hmm. run by Summer Lee Radigan. And there were a lot of incredible choreographers from like all over the world who would come and create work and then also teach class. And that was kind of my first introduction to uh, Gaga technique as well. Uh, And like a lot more improvisation. And I just love improvisation so much and creating my own work. (laughs) So I was very interested in that. And so that was very influential to me. So would you say that your dance training, like on like dance techniques, kind of different styles and things and your interest in creating were around the same time. Do you think they kind of bloomed together? Do you think what attracted you to dancing? Because for me, I think for me, it was always the opportunity to create or feel like I could, you know, I mean, Laurie Anderson says this as well, like to be free. Mm -hmm. But at a younger age, it means something very different to what Laurie Anderson means. But I think that there's, I I, I always felt like I was able to not just self-express, but I felt like I was able to access almost like another world. That was my, that was my way. Yeah. And then the technique stuff came after when I had to learn the discipline Mm -hmm. side, although I was very, I was much better behaved as a child than I am as an adult. So, (laughs) so I wonder, is that the same thing for you? Is your attraction creation or? Yeah. Yeah. I was always, I always loved creation Mm. and I was, I had a lot of like time and space as a child. 
<laughs> and yeah. a lot of like my parents were always giving me creative things to do. And then also just a lot of time to be myself. And in that time to be myself, I really found a drive to create and create performance all the time. I mean, my sister and me always talk about it because our first collaborations together, she's a theater artist now, but yeah. we always used to make lip syncs. <laughs> that was our thing. And we would like record them on the little camera and we would make choreography and actions and we would lip sync. We would learn all the lyrics and lip sync the whole thing. So that was, I always joke that that was like kind of my first, my first creations. <laughs> well, you know what? They were the same for me and my sister. And, uh, yeah. but back in the seventies and eighties, in the late 1900s ah. but but you know it's, I mean, it's just amazing yeah. isn't it yeah did you have outdoor creation time as a child too did you create outdoors yes yeah I mean yeah. it was more like I can remember the it was more like we would build we would build things outside <laughs> yeah infrastructure like fairy forts and yeah little yeah. nooks and <laughs> <laughs> Sports swings but yeah definitely like a lot of creating outdoors and and nature is a huge inspiration in my work generally mm -hmm. and water especially so I think that actually really influenced the themes and research that I'm interested in, in my choreographic practice but yeah definitely creating a lot as as a child generally yeah I love that because already I just feel like there are some and we'll we will be talking about and your work with your sister a little bit more for the stage and maybe the site specific work is with your sister too. But I, I feel like there's an interesting kind of almost pattern here of like a kind of inspiration that you get from nature and a, a longing mm -hmm. to be in nature, but then also that being a catalyst for creation that mm -hmm. doesn't necessarily have to stay there. And I, I think that's really wonderful. So maybe we'll come to that too. So could we talk a little bit about like your first kind of I want to say professional choreographic projects, but I think I mean more that you actually realizing that they were choreographic as opposed mm. to, you know, kind of childhood play or something. Maybe could you talk a little bit about that and maybe a bit of, of yeah. your influences and maybe mm -hmm. if they've changed, yeah. that could be a nice way. I've, I've put those two things together, but if you, they don't have to be together. You can talk about them mm -hmm. separately. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I can talk about them together. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I mean, growing up at Arts Umbrella was inc incredibly influential. Just there were so many choreographers from all over the world coming in. Um, and so I and not only got to be in like a really professional atmosphere as a dancer growing up, but I also got to just see all these people create and create in their own way. And I was always very inspired by that. And I don't know in that point in my career, so to speak, <laughs> I didn't have a lot of time to like create my own choreography, let's say, but I think I found those moments within improvisation. And there were also a lot of choreographers that would come in and be like, okay, now make your own little bit of material. And that was always my favorite part mm -hmm. <laughs> of any yeah. process. Mm -hmm. So, and then when I went to SFU, there was a lot more time and space. And there was also like the infrastructure, like of the building was, there were yeah. these beautiful studios that I could have for free and performance spaces and all these students who were like, yeah, I'll, I'll dance in your work. And so that's where I started to make work that was with a few more people and really like experiencing being a leader in the front of the room and figuring that out. And then mm -hmm. I started to realize, oh yeah, I really, I really love this. Mm -hmm. And then my first like professional choreographic job, let's say was after, right after I graduated, I got asked to choreograph a piece for Rep, the Repertoire Company in, at SFU. So that was my first time getting paid to choreograph. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, and, lovely. yeah, and then from there, I just applied to as many things as I could and watched as much work as I could and wrote grants. And then it kind of blossomed from there. But it really did start in school. Yeah. Yeah, that's wonderful. And I feel like I also did a dance degree, um, but back in the UK mm. in the 90s, and there was space there for me to explore that. I have noticed just to be a little bit kind of dancerly mm -hmm. with this question, but I feel like I've noticed in your work that there's a this beautiful kind of symbiosis between a kind of modern dance or like a formal dance composition sensibility, like mm -hmm. really lovely use of pattern and staging. Mm -hmm. And then with how you describe the raw movement vocabulary and the kind of getting to the essence of, of that in the movement style, but the way in which they're put together and the dancers and the cast you choose to work with, they all seem to offer 
kind of a, a cross, uh, kind of they seem to kind of cross over time zones and kind of mm. eras in dance for me, which makes a lot of sense based on what you're saying and where their influences have come from. But mm -hmm. I, I just wanted to acknowledge that to you that I, I've recognized that and it's it's kind of beautiful. It changes how I breathe when I watch when I've watched your work because mm. I feel like yeah. I feel like I'm I'm accessing kind of both edges of my breath. So I just wanted to share that. Oh, that's lovely. Uh, it, I just wanted to also recognize the kind of not I, I don't want to call it academic I hate calling any choreography academic but there is an element of, of seeing the training seeing a, a, mm. a seeing a trained choreographer which I think comes out in the work and I mm. know for some people that's an oxymoron to be a trained choreographer yeah. but for me it, for me it absolutely isn't like I, I think there's a craft at play there that is completely contained within an understanding or appreciation of the dance world and then it's put in a theatrical setting I'd also really love to hear about your perspective on leadership mm -hmm. and maybe you could offset this with your sister and how you both lead projects and and also I know you have a wonderful group of collaborators and mm -hmm. like stellar stellar people that you're collaborating with and so and you're supporting their growth and development because I feel like you're also offering this other definition of leadership in a sense through mm -hmm. through improvisation through emerging artists through all of these things there's a kind of sharing out of the also the term leadership yet you are at the front of the room as mm -hmm. you say you are leading it mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. so there are two things in there for me that I'd really love to hear from you is like working with your sister how you two kind of move maybe out of dance into theater a little bit that that really collaborative relationship and then mm -hmm. the collaborative leadership or emerging leadership I think they're the two kind of concepts that are floating around in my head <laughs> mm. I'd love to hear your thoughts on those things yeah. yeah it's interesting that you say that like I think when I start a process in a room I always love coming in with like a whole bunch of plans and ideas and choreography <laughs> and really the first few days is like learning a whole bunch of choreography that I've already set on my own body and then seeing how that unfolds in the bodies of a whole bunch of other people and really taking it and making it their own. So that seems very much like a structure to me. But then in another sense, I also really love like score building and making like the dancers making their own material and their own choices inside of it. So there's this one side that's kind of more structured and there's this one side that's a little bit less structured. And I'm interested in how they kind of fold or fall between each other. Mm hmm. Yeah. And then, yeah, Gravity in Your Eyes was the work that I did with my sister for Dancing on the Edge. And and we hope to keep continuing it. Great. Well, that was a really interesting project in terms of leadership and learning about different kinds of leadership. Yeah. And how theater and dance are different. And we also had, we had like artists who were really in the theater world and we had artists who were really in the dance world. We had some artists who were dancers and actors and uh, so there was a wide range of kind of people in the room as well mm -hmm. and yeah I think we we worked like surprisingly well together <laughs> especially yeah. being being of the same blood <laughs> siblings yes <laughs> yeah <laughs> and yeah what did we we learned we learned a lot so I do want to say that there was mm -hmm. also a table as a character in that in that yes piece. yeah and some lamps and as well yeah, lamps and t and the table, I think, were integral to the merging of the two different types of performers that you had in the space. Maybe mm. I wonder if could you talk yeah. maybe a little, just a little bit about the process of like how did how did you choreograph this or how did you direct which or co-direct even the table table work with a difference? You know, the physical mm -hmm. table under over on you know, those kinds of yeah. things, moving the table around the space. I think the listeners might be interested in the, that perspective because I think that really yeah. brought people together. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, it was definitely, we used the table as a meeting place mm -hmm. and like a physical object in space where everything could meet together and then crumble away and then meet together again and crumble away. And that there was this always this very like solid object <laughs> <laughs> and that kind of held space for everybody in the work to come together but it also actually now that I'm thinking of it it kind of did that in the rehearsal room as well because we had this table there the whole like for pretty much all of the rehearsals for like mm -hmm. our three 
weeks. And then we did two weeks last year too. We had a different table. So we would often like sit at that table all together and talk about the work or try different things on or underneath or around the table. Yeah. And it was like a meeting place yeah. in many ways, not just in the yeah. work, but even in rehearsal. Absolutely. And yeah. And then in terms of like how we, we worked, me and my sister worked, we sometimes worked individually. So like my sister would work with the actors and I would work with the dancers mm -hmm. and we would work on one section that we had an idea or themes or a script for. And then we would come together and like mash those two things together and see what happened. Or sometimes we also did rehearsals like all together and everybody would learn choreography or everybody would learn text. So it was kind of, we experimented with both being separate and being together. Yeah. And leading the rehearsals. Yeah. yeah, and leading the rehearsals. Yeah. How did the uh, performers uh, relate to each other in terms of their collaborative? Like, did did they did the actors improvise as well as the dancers improvising at any point? Like, did mm -hmm. was that possible in the process? Do, I think I'm getting to do you and your sister work similarly as kind of siblings? And mm -hmm. are, do you have the same kind of mannerisms and behaviors or are you very different in the way that you go about, not just in your disciplines, but as people, do you go about mm -hmm. your processes differently? Right. I think we have a lot of similarities <laughs> and she, she is a little bit younger. She just graduated from studio 58. So she is kind of at the beginning of her directing career. Yeah. And she's experimenting with what she wants to create. And she has created mostly like solo shows yeah. until this point. So this was yeah. kind of her first group work, I think, since graduating. Mm -hmm. Whereas for me, I have, I don't work solo. <laughs> I really yeah. like working with a whole bunch of other people. So that was a little bit more natural for me. And mm -hmm. yeah, she, I think we have very similar ways of working. The work, I don't think it had really much improvisation. I think it was pretty, it was pretty set, but then again, we, we set material, but we really allowed each performer to kind of live within it in their own way. And yeah. So, and when you say set, do you meet, did you set it with them in the process or did mm -hmm. you decide the moves that they do? A little bit of both. A little bit of both. Yeah. Yeah. Great. A little bit of like, this is the choreography and a little bit of like, okay, take this choreography, rip it apart, make it your own. Yeah. Same with, I think same with the text as well in the script. Oh yeah. Nice. Some of it was like very, the language was very set and some of it was like, okay, experiment with how you might break this apart and mm -hmm. really make it your characters. <laughs> so you say you, you don't want to work solo, but I, <laughs> I, I, I would be interested in, in 10 years time mm -hmm. to see what you have to say about that. I'm just going to hold that in space. Yes, but I know. And I'm actually starting to make something that I think might be a solo, solo work. And it feels really scary because I'm not used to working as a solo artist, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I've, I've had the 30 year kind of career in choreography in various different ways. And I walked away from performing. I kept walking away from it and then, I mean, some people will say I perform all the time, <laughs> but I'm just launching my a solo as well for me this year as well. And it, and it is extremely scary and exciting yeah. at the same time. It just feels important right now at this stage to be doing that mm -hmm. alongside group work, you know, alongside kind of the other. But I feel like there's so much information you get out of those two. Mm -hmm. And if you can manage them at the same time and there's enough kind of not necessarily compartmentalization, but conceptually that they, you feel like they're kind of, they can move enough away from each other to be their own thing. I think mm. it's really wonderful, but just as research, it's really wonderful to be doing them yes. at the same time. Yeah. Absolutely. I'd love to, because I, I'm, I'm partly asking you about that because you're such a, a, a gorgeous dancer and mover, but also you have been working with Vanessa Goodman and Action as Resistance mm -hmm. doing the Graveyards and Gardens and stepping in for Vanessa, who some of us may know performed it in maybe initially, I think initially. Were mm -hmm. you there from the very beginning as an outside eye as she was creating that work or did you come in later no. as that? No. I, okay. Yeah. I came in later after she had her baby. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And she was like, let's have another person in the space before we go on tour. So I was there for a week, just learning the work Yeah, and then kind of on the outside. And then it was, I think maybe a week or two into their tour and she phoned me and was like, 
hey, I, bro- I broke my foot. Oh, I remember that. Oh, <laughs> you've no. been here in three days, and I was like, absolutely, it's my dream. I am, I am there. I am there. I am there. Absolutely. Yes, I am yeah. there for you, and I am there for me. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. for Caroline. Yeah. Yeah. And for, yeah. yeah. and for Caroline, yeah. and for the baby, and <laughs> yeah, yeah, it all. Excellent. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. so working, wonderful. Yeah, working with her has been incredible like as soon as I did I think the first time I she did a piece for SFU in the rep so that was when I first met her and did her work and I think because of my improvisation has always been like such a special place for me Mm -hmm. doing her work because it's so much score work and building your own within a score it felt so natural and so like home yeah (laughs) so every time we go back to her process it feels like it feels like home it's yeah that's that's what I love there's there's also an expansiveness that you both have you know like that I think Mm. is just kind of like aligns really beautifully and she also yeah it's it's like it's so lovely having a mentor or like a leader like that who is just so generous and kind yeah, and open. And that has been really inspiring for me as a leader to yeah. kind of be like, wow, she can, she treats everybody with kindness and respect. And yeah. <laughs> so let's stick with this. I'm working with Vanessa on, I invited her into a project I'm running, which is for choreographers to be in the room together with no dancers to just mm. like ad- address, like to look at, it's almost like an alternative to dance technique class or something. So I'm blessed to be working with the people I am. Vanessa's one of them. Yeah. So I would just maybe like to stick on this idea of leadership and mm. emerging leaders, as you say, of course you won't be emerging forever and already you're proving your chops and <laughs> you're so productive and prolific. And it seems like mm. you managing it very well so you will be catapulted into uh, and out of emerging. However, you know, it's a state of mind and a mindset, right? We can always have beginner's mindset to learn new things. So I don't want to get hung up on the words. I would like us to stay a little bit with the idea of this emerging leadership or like the group of people you're working with. I feel like you're doing a similar thing. I feel like you're all leaders in your own way. You all have your own artistic voices. You're not afraid to work together. You don't feel threatened by each other I think it's just a really healthy thing to talk about especially at the moment Mm -hmm. so could we just give that a little bit of time even if it's just people even if it's just you describing what that collective is and maybe who's in it yeah yeah well yeah I always try to have people in the space who are like really truly collaborators Mm -hmm. (laughs) so people who offer their opinions who offer like what if we did this from here instead of this you know from like taking on choreography, but also making it their own and also bringing a really individual and unique approach to uh, movement and creation generally. And I have been more inspired these days to also start like in having people in my process that are not necessarily in dance. So like theater artists, I've started working with a poet and a writer or film. So I'm Uh, or costume or set design and lighting design and music Um, and sounds and music yeah music is such a huge uh, inspiration in my work actually yeah so I've been trying to bring more disciplines in as well and to have like the most ideas (laughs) possible (laughs) and yeah some of my main collaborators who were kind of with me from the start some of them have moved on to other things some of them have stayed with me but Awen Enquist I've been creating with for a long time She's one of those people that just like takes, is so present in the room, (laughs) which is so beautiful. And she has so many ideas for for the work. And we have so many special conversations inside of the rehearsal process. And the other dance, Nassif Saul, I work with a lot and have been working with for years. Daria Michalik, Sabine Raskin, and Shion Sky Carter. Mm -hmm. So those have been kind of the core company company dancers <laughs> that I've kept working with continuously on and on again. I've been working a lot with Shanna Wolf and Sarah Hutton, Simran Satcher, lots of lots of other dancers, and kind of trying to bring as many people as I can into the rehearsal process. And I'm excited for this, like uh, the next kind of work I'll be creating. I was writing the other day about it, and it, we actually have. We have dancers from four different schools in Vancouver. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that feels really exciting to bring people together from different training 
and different schools of thought and different backgrounds and see what we can make together is, is a I cool opportunity. Yeah. yeah, I feel such a kinship with that. Yeah, and I, I feel like there's a, there's a real kinship. In, and I feel like not only is it necessary at the moment or essential, I think it's, I feel like it's my way of continuing to be open to the possibilities of dance or like, and to where my choreographic voice might go. I, I don't want to get hung up on this idea of relevancy, you know, and as, and as I'm aging, you know, it's different for me mm-hmm. a little bit because it, it doesn't really quite feel like my time, but it is because mm-hmm. I'm here, you know, so it's similar. It's, it's the same as you. It's just a different context. And there's something about learning so much from people who have, who've had different experiences and not mm-hmm. assuming that because they're dancers, they're going to be like-minded, actually. You know, mm-hmm. like there's, a, there's an element, there's an interest, there's a compulsion to choose something over something else, you know, like to choose dance yeah. over another form of creativity. But that's maybe it. That's where we, mm-hmm. that's where our allegiances maybe end, you know. Mm-hmm. So what happens then? And I, I think the world is saying, you know, go find out, you know, about mm-hmm. other people, about other ways, other perspectives, yeah. other yeah. things. Yeah, and there's... There's something so beautiful. I think the more I choreograph and the more I dance, I realize that like the reason I love dance so much is just how present it makes people Mm. Mm. and not just audience in live performance, but also just in the room, in the rehearsal space. And I think watching people take choreography or a task and be really completely present in that moment and away from their phone and we're not on our computers and we're in the space together physically I notice how like just being in the room together, really, really present for five hours <laughs> is mm-hmm. quite amazing. Mm-hmm. And it really like, it brings us together. Yeah. 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 And then outside of that, you have that experience as you go through other things mm-hmm. in life. You've yeah. had that experience. You're going to have it again. There's something mm-hmm. really grounding about that and mm-hmm. kind of almost like a little secretive you know that this is this is life yeah. you know that's kind of happening yeah it's it's yeah. really great yeah yeah so let's talk a little bit about before we get into paper mountains which is the mm-hmm. work that you'll be presenting in dance in vancouver and i i believe as part of the iris garland yeah. emerging choreographer award let's talk let's go back a little bit and talk about some of the other works you've been doing this year you have i, I believe you have a do you have a premiere with Ballet Edmonton the month before Dance in Vancouver? Is that correct? I do, yes. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. See? Yeah, I wasn't making it up, listeners. She really is. Like this year, <laughs> this is Anya's year. So oh, the first one of many. So let's let's talk about what does this year look like? Let's do that. What did this year let's look like that. for Anya Saxton? Yeah, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> January. <Maybe. Yeah. laughs> no, I'm joking. Yeah, it's- yeah, it's been it's been very busy and I'm very grateful to be very busy. Mm-hmm. And I've also been very busy with commissions, which I love because I don't have to do any of the admin. <laughs> I just get oh, to yes. like come in and create what I want to create. And it's so luxurious. Wonderful. So yeah, I'm doing a piece for Ballet Edmonton right now. So I was there for a week and I'll go back for a few more weeks. And then that premieres in October. And can you tell us anything about it? Oh, you can. Okay, yeah, good. That work right now, I think it's about re like growth, regrowth. Mm-hmm. I was really inspired by this quote: the uh, the forest dies and dies and dies again, and so it lives. Mm-hmm. So this like recycling nature, mm-hmm. and I've been working with like cannons of falling bodies and getting up, and so something to me feels like a recycling and a regrowth. So those, that's kind of what the work is about right now. Mm-hmm. And also about water. <laughs> like water. <laughs> always a theme in my work. So there oh, have yeah, been some of now. water coming out of that work. Mm-hmm. And, but I've only been, I've only been there for a week. So we'll see, we'll see what it, what it becomes. Yeah. And then I'm making a work for performance research project with Leslie Telford uh, with Inverso right. Productions, also in October and November. And... Uh, then the premiere of Paper Mountains at DIV will be in November. And then Grabbing Your Eyes was Dancing on the Edge, which was a few months ago. I've also been teaching, I was teaching a course at SFU where I got to, it was choreographic lab. So I got to 
Great. just play with a whole bunch of ideas and creating tools for choreography and teaching improvisation techniques. And that was very special, kind of a playground for me to try a whole bunch of ideas and then bring Wonderful. them forward into these different projects. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, I'm I'm working on a duet with Nasiv and Shanna called Here It Is. So that's kind of a continual project. We fit it in every now and then. And that work is a lot about just like the pain and longing in a world where we leave one at a time. So oh, yes. passing yes. and kind of leaving another person or being left. Yeah, and leaving and being left. Yeah. Yeah, leaving and being left. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's beautiful. Yeah. I can, I mean, that all of these, the way you're describing the ideas, I think we can actually learn a lot from the kind of, not necessarily literal, but the the ease at which you articulate the concept into mm. into a physicality or into a an imaginative space of how one might move or how one might leave and enter space or be in space. So I commend you for that. That's mm. absolutely huge. Yeah. When you say group work, so Ballet Edmonton, how many dancers are you working with? I'm working with eight dancers. Great. So that, yeah, that's been really, I, that's like, I love working with eight people. I was going to say, what <laughs> is that your ideal number? And did you get to choose that? Did you get to ask for eight? No. I can't, it was kind of half and half. It was like, can I have as many dancers as possible? And they were like, how about eight? And I was like, great. Magic, <laughs> so, magic number, magic number. Yeah. And so I'm yeah. trying to stretch myself a little bit more in my practice to like start thinking about creating a solo and creating a duet like with Shannon and Nassif. So that was even a little bit of a stretch for me. I felt um, creating a duet, but mm-hmm. usually I love to work with like six or more dancers. Mm-hmm. Last year I got to make a piece with 25 dancers. So that was also like, I was like, Oh, this is a dream. <laughs> I love oh, yeah. working with people with big ensembles. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Especially mm-hmm. when you're dealing with like human, when you're dealing with like humanity, mm-hmm there's a, a richness of course uh, I mean there is in working with one piece in person but when you've got so many people there's an automatic you know like and where where do you focus the eye for the audience or where are you mm-hmm. drawn you know by that and how do you manage and navigate those kinds of all of those potential narratives but really just physicalities mm-hmm. isn't it more than mm-hmm. anything space this yeah yeah Go yeah on, and so. when there's so many when there's so many people yeah you can have more than one thing happening at the same yeah. time and people can choose where they're looking. Um, and also I've just been obsessed with canons and repetition. So there's some really nice play when, when there's so many people. So many, yeah, exactly. And, and moving yeah. from one interpretation of a concept maybe, or like one zone of the stage to another, like just that mm-hmm. kind of like, if somebody catches it, wonderful. If they don't, wonderful you know it's like mm-hmm. happening the, mm-hmm. the 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 dancers are busy they are they're yeah. you know they're, yeah. and they're taking they're mm-hmm. occupied yeah mm-hmm. with paper mountain would you like to talk a little bit about that project where are you with it right now and uh, mm-hmm. what would you what can mm-hmm. you say tell us about it at the moment and what would you like yeah. to share about the process at the moment mm-hmm. so paper mountains started it feels right now like a little bit of an old work to me <laughs> feels like a little bit of an old skin Mm-hmm. and I'm ready to like I don't know if I want to enter that old skin yet <laughs> so my idea right now is really making it something a little bit new more mm-hmm. of my research that I've been doing in the last few years or maybe two years <laughs> or maybe <laughs> or maybe three months <laughs> the way your life yeah. is going yeah exactly <laughs> yeah and I feel like I've been creating a lot of commissions which have been like 20 minute pieces so mm-hmm. I'm really ready to like apply those, all of that work that I've been doing in those smaller little sections and create it into something like a full length. Yeah. So that is my idea to kind of rip it, rip, tear it all apart, rip it apart. And then really, and then fold a whole bunch of these ideas that I've been working on more recently to really make it something new. Mm -hmm. And the collaborators have changed, like the cast has changed a little bit as well. Yeah. And I have dancers who are coming from different processes and some who have worked with me in those commissions um, in other companies. So we're all bringing that, all of this material from a whole bunch of different places together and then creating something new with that, Mm -hmm. which I'm really excited about. But the work started, it was before COVID actually. We started the very beginning of the project and then right after COVID, we kind of continued it. And the original piece had like a thousand paper planes that were piled all throughout the space, hung, 
and kind of moved through the work were flown and they kind of sat on their tips a lot of the time making kind of a mountain Mountains, yeah. image mm-hmm. and then yeah it was five dancers a composer uh, and me and we ended up filming the work because it was COVID and we couldn't do it live and then from there I was interested in keeping going with it and we did do like a little stu- some studio warehouse showings of the work And now where I'm at now is, yeah, building something completely new. I am interested still in this falling and using materials that feels like a falling or a cascading around bodies. I don't know if that will be paper planes yet. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It might be uh, some other material, Mm -hmm. but I'm interested in the action of it and the flow of it and Mm -hmm. covering the bodies in in something. Um, But I'm, I'm not sure if that'll be paper planes yet. Yeah. But the work right now, I think the work right now is a lot about like fragmentation and disintegration and like particles of a whole. And I think this, I've been working a lot with the story of like two people kind of separating over, over a work or over a time. So one person leaving another or coming together, leaving, falling mm-hmm. away. Yeah. The distance as well. Yeah. I think in my site specific work, I've been working a lot with like the urgency of the climate crisis. So that kind of comes up a lot in my work, that urgency of like living in a world that's crumbling or <laughs> falling a little bit and feeling that like urgent urgent need to help without having the infrastructure to help. <laughs> and so that, that kind of surfaces in the, I think will surface in the work as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I keep thinking about, about when you say we, we look at the work or like, you know, kind of almost like rejig the work there's an element of uh what is it to be at the peak of a mountain I just feel mm-hmm. like that's and and, mm-hmm. and what and the vista like over you're kind yeah. of you're kind of over it right <laughs> you're kind of over the last <laughs> version of it but then what does it mean to, to take your kind of way of describing it to look on the other sides of the mountain the other side of the mountain mm-hmm. or you're already talking about landscapes yeah. kind of shifting yeah and the I've vistas been... shifting yeah. Mm-hmm. And I've been interested in this like story of like, there's this mountain that's falling and we know mm-hmm. it's falling and mm-hmm. we're working and we're going through our lives and we co- can't quite see this mountain that's falling, but we hear it's falling and we see photos of it falling and we, we, we know, but we have to continue on this <laughs> path. And I don't know what this story is quite yet, but this kind of like trying to continue onward when there's something that is falling or something that needs help. <laughs> Welcome to the podcast where Anya describes life. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely so, wonderful. Yeah. It feels yeah, a little bit of like a soup right now. <laughs> like there, I have so many different ideas and so yeah. it needs to be a little bit clarified. So I'm excited to get into the rehearsal with everyone and have a few weeks to, to do that. Yeah, because from there you'll work out what belongs and what doesn't in all mm-hmm. of those ideas, right? And as well. So, what does it? Do you feel pressure? To I don't feel like you feel pressure, I've, or if you do, it's kind of like an exquisite pressure. You like you're you're you invite it. You know that the, you invite mm-hmm. the pressure. You're fine under pressure. Mm-hmm. But do you feel like people expect a certain kind of work from you, or are you and are you okay with that? <laughs> Hmm, I think, I don't know if I do. Mm-hmm. I definitely feel pressure. I feel a lot of like self, pre- like I think I'm the kind of person who gives yeah. myself a lot of pressure. And yeah. I think something big that I've been trying to stay with is just like being present in the project that I'm doing at the very moment because I'm writing so many grants and I have to like, when I'm on my computer, I have to think about like 2025 and 2026 yeah. instead of thinking about like what's happening right now. So yeah. when I'm in rehearsal and when I'm creating work, I am trying to be like really present in mm-hmm. what's happening in the moment mm-hmm. <laughs> so I can enjoy each moment, which is really hard. So I find pressure in that way of like pressure, like thinking about the future and being like, oh my gosh, I don't have anything after these six months, or I only have these little, and then between it all, I don't know what I have. So I'm learning to just trust the process. So there's yeah. a bit of pressure in that. And I think, yeah, I don't know if I feel pressure to create any type of specific work. I definitely feel 
yeah, I think I give myself pressure sometimes by like imagining that there's going to be an audience, but I kind of have to like let that go a little bit when I'm in the creation mode be like, okay, what do I truly want to make? And what does, what do I dream? And what does my soul want to create? And Mm -hmm. what is needed in this room of people right now? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then let that breathe and let that flow. And then that's what the performance is. (laughs) You see what I love about that? I think that's a form of leadership that you just defined mm-hmm. there because, and something I I feel is really important that we understand that as we are also contributing to the creativity and to the, and we're putting ourselves into the pot, you know, so when you're asking other people to improvise and devise and all of these things, whether or not you're setting material on them or not, the, the contributions the leader makes is absolutely makes a difference in the room absolutely makes Mm. a difference so Mm. I think that was a really wonderful description and staying present is the task for everybody right is that we to be able to do it as a gift you know Mm -hmm. and then to be able to keep doing it (laughs) with different people is like is a skill (laughs) it just keeps going absolutely yes (laughs) so and then what do you what fuels your interest in your work do you think hmm people. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Bringing people together, having, I mean, what I talked about with just watching bodies be really present with a task Mm -hmm. with choreography is so, so beautiful to me. Mm -hmm. And yeah, music is a huge inspiration in my work. I listen to so much music and working with a composer. I work with Stefan Nazarevich a lot Mm -hmm. and he composes a lot. We work together a lot and have worked together for quite a few years. So that is a big reason I create. It's just like listening to music and I feel very inspired by music. And I think when I'm, when I'm dancing, when I'm moving, I just feel the most free that I like, I'm the most free when I'm moving. (laughs) And so I love to go into a room with other people and offer that to other people Mm -hmm. and really create work that's has moments that are very physical. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sweat. Mm -hmm. What do you think fuels the public or, presenters or dancers interest in your work do you think it's this do you think it's mm. the same thing do you think they're connecting to the same thing you are do you think that's the message you're getting across to your collaborators and to your audiences and to presenters maybe that mm. it's the people do you think this do you think there's something else at play there like what what has been your feedback that has stuck with you the most uh, has resonated with you the most from anybody who's given you feedback about your work uh, you don't mm. have to even say who mm-hmm. or you know whether they were audience presenter dancer or anything yeah. because I think sometimes that feedback loop is also a catalyst and gives us fuel whether it's how we want our work to be perceived or it's not I think it's really useful mm-hmm. to have that do you have that context yet do you mm. have- I think uh yeah I have two different moments that I can think of one is yeah. the contrast I think I try to work a lot with like the contrast of like hardness and softness mm. so like urgency and letting go mm. and those two things living within the same world so something that's very physical and something that's really soft and letting go so those that dynamic has been something that people feel like they are intrigued by or interested in mm. and then in my site specific work, I did a work outside, like on, at the ocean. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and that was a really special opportunity because we had a lot of audience feedback that was like along the lines of we danced at the shore of the ocean and at the end we swam away, or, like around the corner. And there was a lot of feedback that was like, oh my gosh, did you see like the, there were exactly the amount of ducks as dancers or, oh, there were like all these rocks and the sun went down exactly when you did this or when you were swimming, it was actually like the same time as the rhythm of the water. And what they were experiencing was just being present in nature. Absolutely. (laughs) And I was like, wow, okay, I want to create more opportunities for people to sit and be present. (laughs) Mm. Whether that's like, we're in a room and we're collaborating and we're like, tuning into our internal landscape and ourselves. Or if it's sitting and watching a work and finding something that you tune into or realizing something about yourself or the world, but finding space to, to like tune into our own bodies and our own ideas. So that was, that was one thing that I really hung on to and was like, Oh, that's really special. <laughs> mm-hmm. Very special. Cause it's also yeah. contained then, for people. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. You're containing then, it at the same time. Yeah. 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 A container for, for presence. Presence. <laughs> a container yes. for presence. Yes. <laughs> Go on. Mm-hmm. And you said, and one more, you were going to say one more. Oh, I was just going to say, and then another part of me still feels like I'm, I mean, maybe I will probably always be experimenting and trying new ideas right now. Sometimes I feel like I have so many ideas inside of a work that it feels a little bejumbled and I'm still trying to um, concentrate it (laughs) Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. stick to, I'm, I think I'm trying to stick to one idea for some of my next work. (laughs) It feels like a, like a pouring sometimes of everything and um, how to, how to condense that. I'm still working on that. (laughs) <laughs> I'm I'm absolutely still working on that. I have so many voices in my head of people from all walks of life, all disciplines mm-hmm. telling me maybe I could get rid of a couple of ideas. Uh, I'm <laughs> I'm still working on that. So have a whole life you know. process ahead of you mm-hmm. for all of that. It's so wonderful. Mm-hmm. So let's just maybe a couple of things like what, is surprising you right now maybe about the industry or creation experiences you're having this is partly Mm -hmm. inspired by I think you've also been traveling a little bit and going to maybe showcases Mm -hmm. and uh, I think you went to Montreal for something Mm -hmm. and and a bunch of places and just what what are you experiencing about the kind of dance milieu or the wider dance milieu I feel like you're about to you know very possibly launch into kind of national or like international you know territory <laughs> soon and you know and it, that sounds so glamorous but I just mean I just mean that there's a trajectory there right it's almost inevitable mm-hmm. so what what's that for you like what do you think that is or what it, what have you been either your surprises or your experiences of that so far you've already talked to Germany and the U.S. with uh, graveyards and gardens for action at a distance so mm-hmm. you've had these insights a little bit And maybe they are extremely isolated uh, in some ways, but there's also a bit of perspective there. So what surprised you about those or what from your experiences or what do you hope for? Hmm. Yeah, I think I'm still learning. I think I'm Mm -hmm. still learning about that. And I feel like I've just started to kind of reach my work to other places in Canada. (laughs) Yeah, Ballet Edmonton. Yeah. And as a dancer, I have been able to tour to a lot of different places with Vanessa. Yeah. So I'm very fortunate for that. But in terms of like creating, creating work in other places, I think I'm continually surprised in a, in a good way of just how much passion and love there is (laughs) of dancers. (laughs) Like I enter a room and there's just a whole bunch of people that are really excited to dance and move and learn and listen and uh, explode. And even if like down to like, it's a, it's a training program, it's a workshop, it's a professional experience. It's really established dancers from like all of that range. There's just so, so many people that are, have so much drive and so much to like pour into a process, even when they're just meeting me. (laughs) And I I think I'm always, like surprised a little bit Mm. about that and just how small the or not small but how connected the community is yeah every time I go somewhere like I take a workshop in New York I'm like oh I know somebody here (laughs) or (laughs) or even like in Germany it was like oh I actually like know some people here at this festival and it is quite connected and I'm always surprised by that how how connected it is Mm -hmm. yeah I love that word you're so positive and I think it's, uh, well, I just think, you know, I think it's a really, it, it's just really healthy. So keep on keeping on with your positivity and your shining and your wonderful approach. I think it's, it's, it's so needed. So, and then what's, what's next for you then? Are you in a space of currently applying for the next yeah. phase? Yeah. 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 Right now I'm writing. You've, you've got the duet. Yes. I, yeah. The duet we just got a grant for. So we're going to work on that a little bit over the next few months and then dia it's very packed until div yeah and then it's december so yeah. then after that yeah right now i'm writing a lot i'm trying to make a new site specific work in the forest mm-hmm. so i'm trying to get that going with like a large cast of dancers 
And I'm also working with a writer right now. We're kind of creating something together. So I'm interested in text and language and uh, like words. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we've been working with like subtitle projections, which has been really interesting. And and then the second phase of Grabs in Your Eyes, the work I'm doing with my sister, we're trying to get that up and running and create it. For Dancing on the Edge, it was like a thir- like a 35 minute work. Mm-hmm. And it really felt like it needed to be stretched out a little bit and longer. So we're hoping to make that into a full length and then premiere it sometime in the future. And maybe tour it too, right? Is that the plan? Yeah, yes. I mean, that's ideal. It is a large cast. Mm-hmm. Like it's eight dancers. Yeah. <laughs> so we're 10 people, which is a lot of people. Yeah. But we would, lo- yeah, we would love to tour that or at least like regionally tour it near, yeah. near Vancouver at the very least. So, and then hopefully, yeah, hopefully more touring. Hopefully I get to visit new communities and artists and audiences. That's, mm-hmm. that's the goal. <laughs> yeah. It's wonderful. Well, you're, you are definitely on your way and doing. Um, such a fine job so um (laughs) thank you so much for talking with me today this has been an absolute pleasure Anya and uh we look forward to seeing your work at DIV and beyond yeah best wishes to you your sister and all of your collaborators and uh, amazing thank you so much for your time I'm sure I'll be speaking to you again okay thank you so much Bye. bye now thank you so much for listening We would love for you to subscribe, rate, and review wherever you get your podcasts, as this will help other listeners find us and help us to grow our dance audience. We'll be back next month. In the meantime, you can follow us on Facebook at The Dance Centre, Twitter at Dance Centre, and Instagram at The Dance Centre BC. And if you'd like to support our work, please consider making a donation. Just go to our website at thedancecentre.ca where you'll find extensive information about our upcoming programs and events. The music for the Dance Centre podcast was composed by James B. Maxwell. Always a pleasure to connect with you through dance. Until next time. Mm -hmm.